Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This lesson is a jazz comping lesson. I'm going to show you a strategy that I teach in my course called Jazz Comping Mastery. It's how, it's it's an approach to go about practicing and internalizing a bunch of voicings of one chord. And really, we want to learn many voicings of many, many chords uh, so we can sound interactive and dynamic um, and melodic even with our chords when we're, we are comping, when we are playing harmony. We don't just want to be having our one chord shape and sitting on it. We want to be able to move around with many voicings and uh, be able to interact and actually improvise. So it's a bit daunting to go about uh, memorization of a bunch of chord shapes, which we do need to do. And the theory is super important, and um, I teach that stuff quite a bit too, but just knowing the theory doesn't mean it's ready in our fingertips. So we do need to understand the theory too, and that's kind of its own study and its own goal. But if our goal also is to just be ready on the fly to play these things, we have to go through it in a way that is uh, very drill-like. We just have to. So with any chord we're going to use dominant seven chord and we're going to create a bunch of voicings off of this and not create but just i'm going to show you um because i could just give you a bunch of shapes but but i'm going to give you a bunch of shapes and show you the actual practice approach to go through and practice those that makes it very applicable to your actual actual playing so the first thing just to recognize here is that because this is a voicing of that of a chord that is a dominant seventh chord which has a one three five and then a flat seven in it well every voicing um on these four, uh, every voicing of this could have uh four inversions total where the root is on the bottom the third is on the bottom the fifth is on the bottom the seventh is on the bottom and everything inverts now we're not going to talk about how to do that but that is its own thing if you move this root down to the closest possible chord tone you get flat seven so that would be okay that's going to be in the voicing below if you move the five down to the closest possible uh voicing on that same string that's the third so that and then you do that with all of them that's how you can actually manually find these that's a great practice to do as well but it's also fine to just work with the chord shapes and try to internalize them and do it that way so the way that i want to have you practice this is something that i call the hub latching a approach i love to add give names to things and make them sound very official it's just what i do i like to categorize things in that way the hub latching approach so what that means is that we're taking a very familiar root position voicing and we are treating it as the hub we are calling it the home base it is the hub that we base everything else off of and then we're going to dance around that and build around that in a very logical way that helps us see our uh, other voicings and our inversions of the chord. So a very common way to do this would be to do what I was talking about before. You take like this, these middle four strings, this voicing, and then you go, okay, I'm going to play all of the inversions along the four strings. And I think that's a great way to practice it as well. But we need to be latching onto something. Our view needs to be anchored onto a root somewhere. Now, when I do it this way along uh, one string, I am anchoring my view on a root at all times. I'll switch it and think, there's the D root, and then I'm playing off the three, there's the D root, I'm playing off the five. So that's one strategy. But with this, with this strategy, I wanna do it um, kind of all in one place, which is a little closer to how we might play in real music. So another aspect of the hub latching approach is that we actually wanna come back to that familiar root position chord probably more often than the other voicings because this this can work for solo guitar as well where if you go to voicings that don't have the root on the bottom it can and work out all these inversions it can feel like uh, we lost the sound of the root but if you come back to it frequently and use those as little punches and use those as little little statements you can venture off to and then come back to the main chord ah then we are then we have a ton of uh, interactive material that we can use without it feeling like, where did the bottom end go? You know, and of course, if a bass player is playing, then you can live all you want with upper voicings and voicings that don't have the root on the bottom. Let's actually get into this exercise. The first thing we want to do is create a path of the chord tones of the notes that we're going to base the inversions off of. The first one is just the root. That's our hub. Okay, then we're going to play a voicing off of the third. We're going to play a voicing or an inversion off of the fifth, and that's it as far as going up. So five, and then back down to three, and then the root, and then we're going to play one off of the flat seven and the five. So all this is, is this is an arpeggio of D, D dominant seven. One, three, five, three, one, flat seven, five, 
flat seven, one. Okay, so. And that is our path. That's what I call our path that we're going to play a voicing off of each of those. And I very much think of it that way. So if we're playing off of the root, it's that standard voicing. And if we play off of the third, it's going to be this voicing where it's the third flat seven root and five but I'm seeing it as off of the third of D. So I'm seeing the root here and playing it off of that. The next one is off of the five. So I'm seeing the root here and I'm seeing that this is the fifth away, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm playing the voicing off of that. So this is a totally legitimate way to work on this where you just, where I just give you these shapes and then you kind of drill through them this way. Another legitimate way is to learn the theory and then do this secondarily. You could, or you could do this first and learn the theory secondarily. There's no one way, there's no one order, a linear path we have to learn music. It all kind of gets filled in. This path gets us toward the practical hands-on playing, ready to jump to things, ready to interact, ready to comp. Um, and so we're just doing it on one voicing, but it's a great way to practice uh, to do this. And, and so just on this one chord is, is the way I want to play with it for now. Uh, and you could drill the same way uh, with m any other uh, jazz chord type, any other seventh chord type. So we're going to do our path with the voicings now, and I'm just going to give them to you on the screen. So here's the hub, then off the three, then back to the hub. We're going to play the hub every time in between. Then off the five, then back to the hub. Then off the three, then back to the hub. Then off the flat seven. And don't sweat if some of these feel not practical. It's reviewing vocabulary. This one you might end up using all the time, or you'll find one that just feels amazing. Another one is really cumbersome, but that's okay. It's part of the practice routine to work on those two to see it, and then say, ah, I'm not. You know, we're not going to use all of them equally. You might not use some of them at all, but during the practice, go through all of them. So hub, flat seven, back to the hub, and then the five below. Okay, and then back to the hub, and then back to the flat seven. And then back to the root. I like to go. Dun, 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 dun. You don't have to come all the way back uh, to the root like that, but whatever way you want to just kind of bounce between them in the hub. Once you learn them, then you can actually practice comping this exact way. We're not doing it in, in an order now. I'm just jumping to any of them and back to the hub quite a bit and you see how it works like we're not so tired of this well maybe you might be but then uh then you can explore around a little more before coming back but i personally don't feel that tired of this when i'm able to ornament with all these other voicings around it so that's the path for off the fifth string um, so we're going hub off the three hub off the five hub off the three hub off the flat seven hub off the flat five or off the off the five below and then flat seven and then back to the root. So it's just a way to memorize them. And then what I recommend is playing around with them and uh, just improvising with a backing track. I'll demonstrate that here in one sec, but let's do the same thing off the sixth string and get a bunch more voicings. Here's the hub and you'll just, we'll just have this voicing and then we'll do off the three and we'll here, here is our path. One, three, five, flat seven, one. Okay, back down one, flat seven, five, three, one, flat seven, one. Okay, so here's our voicing off of, off of the hub, the root, and then voicing off the three, back to the root, voicing off the five, back to the hub, I mean, voicing off the flat seven, back to the hub, root position up an octave, back to the hub, off the flat seven, hub, inversion off the five, hub, inversion off the three, hub, inversion off the flat seven. Now this one, I love this voicing. That sound down there. It's, it's lovely. And then I can jump over to this area too after having practiced that stuff. So, so you can go back to that hub whenever you want. And I'm sliding into some of them. I'm kind of playing the th thumb first and then the fingers after that for some of them. If you're playing with a pick, just strum, you know, do your own thing. A lot of times I will also play the top note and then fill in the other the other notes. You could do that with a pick or fingers. And it's kind of a nice way to get to the chord. It has a little melody on top too, so. So 
Mm -hmm. I'm just using straight up inversions of dominant seven, uh, D dominant seven. Mm -hmm. And we get a bunch of options. Let's listen to that with a backing track of just D dominant seven, where I'll just try to play around with those voicings. Pretty powerful. Only voicings of just straight up one, three, five, flat seven voicings, inversions of D dominant seven. That's not even taking into account other notes that could add melody to it, like chord melody options and or extensions. So very quickly here, I'm just gonna say the way that I would create more interesting chords from that is I would take every single voicing and replace the root with the nine. Just take the root. So say we're on this voicing and if I take this root here and bring it up a whole step you're just going to take every voicing and replace the root with the nine you're going to replace the root with the note that is up a whole step from it we just doubled our voicings we just doubled our shapes without too much uh headache here you got to know where the root is you got to practice it with the hub latching approach so you would map all of those out and in this case we would get this voicing, which I love, the nine is on the bottom, super cool. And then this is off the three with the nine. This is off the five with the nine. Back to off the three with the nine. Here's off the nine itself. Here's our hub. Here is our off the nine, off the flat seven with the nine added. Um, and I love this one, off the five on the bottom with the nine added on top. And so you can start to play around with these that get um, kind of melodic. And like this one up here, the nine and the root are on the top. So it, it actually is adding something melodic to it. So you would do the same hub approach to work out any kind of variations of voicings. And that gives us a bunch. I'm pretty sure that gives us 22 different voicings that we just talked about here. If you took all of those we went over initially and then added the nine to it. I'm gonna comp with uh, all of those options in there as well. That's this off the five with the nine added. This is so cool. Off the three here, but with the nine added, it makes what usually looks like a half diminished chord shape. Just comping here it almost sounds like chord melody it almost sounds like something much more of a of a lead interest um, but it's comping and the the beauty of it is that you can get into that zone a little bit of of saying something melodic and musical and, and worthy of a statement because you want to have that kind of ammo to interact with somebody or to interact with yourself or to respond to yourself or throw a little um comping action in between playing lines or or whatever you want um, so that's the idea the ultimate thing is to do that on a bunch of chords and then see them so well that you see the voice leading between them that when a chord changes wherever you happen to be on the, all over the guitar you can move to uh, let's say you're right here and we're playing d7 as we've been doing and the next chord is g major 7 well to be able to see the closest chord long game goal but by doing that one chord at a time and just enjoying some comping on one chord at a time with, with that strategy, uh, it'll, you'll start to see those connections and, and play with it over tunes in that way. If you don't have a chord type that you know you can jump to, a chord shape you know you can just jump to on the fly, 
super quickly for any jazz chord that comes up if you were reading a lead sheet or at a jam session or just playing around with songs you love at, at your home if you don't have a shape you know you can jump to for every single chord shape that comes up definitely download my pdf booklet called any jazz chord it walks through with a really simple uh, methodology for how to play any jazz chord that comes up with actually only eight shapes and that sounds crazy but uh, if that interests you check it out because it's really real and uh, it's a great thing to have under your fingers as a foundation to then start adding more complexity on top of like we talked about in this lesson so i hope you found that valuable i really enjoy working on that stuff and then seeing it come together as more options as we get more options to be creative with um let me know what you thought in the comments that would be awesome i post a video every week so i will be back here next tuesday and i'll see you then thanks so much mm -hmm.